one. Hey guys, Morgan here. I am with David and we are talking about audiobooks. So if you are an author or you're planning to be an author, we want to make sure that you know about audiobooks because they are the next big thing and we've got some information for you and we've got a plan to help you get your audiobook out there. So David, thanks for being with me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Morgan. I'm so happy to be here. And you know, this is, I'm very passionate about this whole spoken word audio space. It's what I do. I'm a longtime music producer that moved into this business very intentionally over the last 10 years. And uh, I'm excited about working with you on audiobooks with your authors. So It's going to be amazing. Okay. So I have yeah. sort of my own experience with an audiobook because I, I did mine. Um, but I would love to get your perspective first on like, what do you see happening in the industry? Like, um, how, like, how is the audiobook industry changing and, and what does that make possible for authors? Well, I think what's driving a lot of this, and you and I have talked offline about this, and, and I can speak to you in terms of our experience as a production company, we are seeing this market absolutely explode right now. I think what's driving it is the appetite for content and the perceived scarcity of time. So mm -hmm. we have an increased appetite of content and people just don't feel, whether it's real or perceived, we feel like we don't have enough time to sit and read, unfortunately, for better and worse. But thank goodness there is this audio domain where we can walk the dog, we can do our commute, we can drive, we can uh, do chores around the house, and we can consume content uh, that we otherwise wouldn't have had or don't think we would have had time to do. So from the author perspective, what I hear a lot from the folks we work with is their fans are asking for audio versions of the books they've either already released or they're about to release. Oh, I hope you're going to have audio because I really love doing audio. Um, the other piece to this is the podcast market and that whole the habit of consuming audio content is also driving the audiobook side of the market. So there's some cross pollination. That is a great point. And I will admit that I used to be one of those people who was like, I'm only going to read. Like I will read it in an ebook and I will read it in a paperback, but I'm only going to read it. And then I started listening to podcasts and that was the yep. gateway for me because as I started listening to more podcasts and then I got AirPods and then it became a real thing. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> they can just sit in your ears while you're, you know, doing the dishes and all that and they don't get in the way. Yeah. But like I was, right. I found myself listening to so much more content and I was like, Oh, I have this like space in my day for all this new content. Right. And then I, I heard people on podcasts say, Hey, I've written a book. You can grab the audiobook version. And I was like, Oh, audiobook. Let me give that a try. And then I was hooked. I mean, after that, like, yeah. I listened to audiobooks constantly now. And as an author, it's amazing because my book is available as an ebook, a paperback, a hardback and an audiobook. And I make more on the audiobook sales than the other three combined. And that's because more of them are being sold, do you think? More units. It's not because of pricing, right? It's, yeah. it's more units and a slightly higher price point. There you go. So it's both, a little bit of both going on. That's yeah. so, that's really, really cool. 87, some 87,000 new audiobook titles are generated yearly. Last I checked, Edison, wow. there's some research out there. Um, so there's a lot of them being, and there's now. more users, right? So like, I know yeah. sometimes as authors were like, Oh no, there's more books out there. Like, Oh, there are going to be people to read my books, but there's more, <laughs> there are more people, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. there are more people reading. There are more people reading in English because it's right. right. spreading, right? There's more people listening. There's more people listening in English. <laughs> so like, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And like, this is the time to jump in. Yeah, I think it is. And and as you sort of telegraphed, you know, you, you go to you splash the author page right on Amazon or wherever and you and you have all the different possible versions. So the so the consumers get to decide how they want to you're really promoting all the versions when you promote. But audio is absolutely taking off. I know we're experiencing it in our business as we continue to scale and grow and work with more great authors. So it's it's been a lot of fun. So one of the things that I would love for us to, that we've already talked about, we're going to do is have like, you know, right. give them some information, some sort of lessons learned, some kind of like, how do we do this audiobook thing? Yep. Um, and then, you know, at the end, if people want to connect with you directly to ask about your, you know, how they can work with mm -hmm. you to produce an audiobook, we'll definitely have all that information linked up. But um, for the yeah. moment, could we maybe start with um, like some just classic mistakes. Like what do, what do people, what are some of the mistakes people make when they first start like exploring um, okay, I want to do an audio book. Like, what yeah, those, no, um, it's a great, it's a great, that we should avoid. No, it's a great question. So, um, to DIY the audio book, um, you really have to have some pretty serious audio skills. And one of the things that drives that is that, um, the backbone 
of Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. And I'll speak from that perspective. There are other distribution systems, but ACX is kind of like the home base for a very large portion of the market. So a good deal of our authors, we upload their content when we finish the production to ACX, which then distributes it out to Apple, um, uh, Amazon, and uh, Audible. So th the three, the big three. So they... Uh, require some pretty serious audio specs upon delivery. So certain things like noise floor, which is, has to do with the relative noise behind you. I'm talking on a mic now, but there's noise behind me. It might be air conditioning. It might be, it's raining outside. It might be a, a fan that's in the room. Those sorts of ambient sounds need to be reduced to what something, this is a little technical, but minus 60 dB. So things like that, the peak levels in the audio, I'm just giving you examples. RMS, which is the average level of the audio. So there are numerous requirements that you might say are pretty audio file technical, and you need to understand how to deliver the audio that's in an acceptable way in compliance with ACX so that they don't reject your audio. So sometimes we hear someone who DIY'd it. They recorded it on their iPhone, or they were outside, or there were certain things in the content that weren't in compliance with the rules per ACX, that's where it helps to have some experience coming in, particularly on the audio file side, but also on the content side. For example, the opening and closing credits have specific things they need to say. The beginning of each chapter has to be formatted a certain way um, when you announce it. Um, the files need to have what's called room tone in the front and the back a certain amount of time on each of those files as they're delivered separately to ACX for delivery to all those three uh, channels. So those are the sorts of mistakes that if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you can get into trouble and go through a lot of trouble recording your book and then only have to do it again. So that's, that's a drag. Yeah. And okay. So let's, let's talk first maybe about like recording your, your own audio book. And then we can also talk about hiring like a narrator. Yeah. Those are the two. Fun amount, exactly. That's so perfect. I guess, and maybe the first big question is like, well, how do I, how do I decide between whether I should narrate myself or whether I should hire talent? Yeah, that's a great question. So the, one of the first things that I talk about with an author when we first meet is that decision. Some authors come to me and they already know they want to be the voice of their brand. They're podcasters, they're speakers, they're NSA people, they're consultants, their brand, I mean, sorry, their voice is the connection, their brand connection to their audience. So it, it just makes sense that they would be the voice to deliver the content. So that's a done deal. We know how to do that. And we'll talk about the mechanics of doing that in a moment. For the other, and we deal in some fiction, but mostly nonfiction, there are some cases where an author is too busy. They feel they may have too much of a twang in their voice or an accent that's regionalized and they don't want it to feel that way. Um, they just don't feel that they're the voice, they're capable of delivering a performance that will uh, serve the, the project. In those instances, we can uh, hire talent in a number of different ways, but I'll give you the basics. Royalty only, a hybrid, which is royalty plus, and then uh, only uh, uh, per finished hour, which is, so it's a sort of a spectrum if you visualize it. It's royalty only, which is a participation in the back end sales. It's a little, it's royalties, just like I described, plus a stipend per finished hour of audio, and then finally only per finished hour of audio. So those are the basics and we can it's drill the same a little deeper. in the publishing world right i mean you have traditional publisher where they get you get just royalty or they get the royalties and you have hybrid where you pay some up front and they you split the royalties or you have freelance right where there you go. Hire someone to it's, do it. so it's exactly the same exactly the same that's true and so um so in terms of hiring now to decide on who the narrator should be typically after once we post a title for auditions you know usually within 14 days a couple of weeks maybe three um we're going to get an influx of anywhere from a half a dozen to a dozen auditions in um, to prepare the uh, auditions, posting a title for auditions. We have the author create what we'll call a narration script, which is an excerpt of, well, I'll call it a page or two, maybe a page and a half, a few paragraphs that will challenge the narrators when they audition and, and really explore the, the, uh, the widest, the broadest range that they'll encounter through the title. So if there's a lot of dialogue or there's an action sequence or if there's some challenging emotional material, you want to include that in the audition so that as an author, you're hearing the spectrum of what this narrator will deliver. Mm. So that's so, helpful. Okay. So like a page and a half excerpt that is 
particularly for nonfiction books, maybe it's like telling part of your story or really hitting it like the crux of like yep. the, the emotional heart of your, of your book or yeah. the core of your message. You really yep. want to hear how they, how they would deliver that. And so then these people are sending in like a three to five minute um, audition, basically. That's exactly right. They'll send and in. you just go with like your gut, like what sounds good? <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that. It's actually true. Um, sometimes, <laughs> okay, there's a, there's a bit of a, a nuance to this. So I'll, I'll try to verbalize uh, this. And this is a collaborative process with an author because, I mean, they know it's a gut feeling for them as well, because they're going to know when, Oh, this is like, a, this is like my proxy voice. This is like, if I could do it, this is what I'd like to do it as. And a lot of times, not always we'll listen to the author's voice when I speak with them. And I may be matching it to some degree, maybe not exactly, but in terms of phrasing or attitude or certainly age or gender, obviously, we're going to choose a gender when we put it up for auditions, but there is some resemblance between who we cast and who the, the ideal, what the ideal expression of the author reading their own would have been if they had done it. Mm. So that's very helpful to reference. Sometimes not. Sometimes it's like for some fiction, the, the, uh, the, the main character might be the opposite gender of the, of the author. And so in those instances, we would cast it accordingly. But all this is part of the discussion with an author in the beginning. Once we've determined whether they're going to be the voice or we're going to hire, we, you know, we'll talk about what is the casting? What are the, what's the profile of the ideal voice for this book? Gotcha. Yeah. And then, um, you know, once you hire someone who, like, this is their job is to narrate. Like, they, do they yeah. generally um, need a lot of handholding or can you sort of, like, toss a script at them and they'll they'll make the changes to as you read this book to as you listen to this book like that sort of thing oh i see what you're saying so um what we like to suggest for authors is that they look there's a couple questions in there so sorry <laughs> no that's all, it's all good it's, it's complex so most of look there's a whole lot of voiceover talent that will audition in many cases you'll get a spectrum of, of capacity so some of them you're going to know no nah, they're not and frankly, when I'm auditioning, uh, I listen for the quality of them on mic. Sometimes um, some of the less experienced voice over talents may record the audition on their iPhone or something or on a, a less than optimum situation. And they're basically demoing how the final product will sound, will sound and I'm just not going to include them in the final audition. Oh. I want the audition to sound like the product because yeah. I, I, I could cut them loose on the product and you know the uh, audio quality is substandard, the quality of the microphones, the environment they're in. We'll talk a little bit more about the self-read aspect of that, but they're presumably in a studio, uh, the quality of the editing they do, you know, cause they're editing and they're voicing. So, uh, so there's this professional, there'll be three or four that are just like stand out much better than the others. And of those we'll pick three, call it two or three of the best. And then the author and I will meet and we'll decide together. Sometimes they just know. I send them the link to the audio and they're just like, yeah, it's, it's number two. And so we just go with it. Um, there was the other side of your question was, oh, so we'd like to recommend that an author, before we uh, create a manuscript for production, production manuscript or recording manuscript, that you scrub it for things like, um, well, easy stuff to think about is graphics, photos, mm -hmm figure A, figure B, any references to visual elements, they're not going to translate to audio. So you got to figure out how you want to work around it. A couple different ways to do that. One is you can describe what's in the visual. This is, this is a graph showing. So you're not going to reference if there's a graph. You're just going to talk about the information that you're presenting in the graph, but you won't reference it at all. In Mike McCallowitz is so good at that. <laughs> Have you ever listened to Mike McCallowitz audio? I book? actually haven't, but oh, he's I'm hilarious. He does his own and he like describes the graphs and it's a terrible description, but it's just so funny to hear him talk about it. He's like, Oh, just go to the bonus section and get the graph. <laughs> well, that's it. You know? And so, and, and that's the second workaround is, you know, these are not mutually exclusive. You can combine them too. You can say, look, here's a description about what you can find the graphic that I'm talking about at such and such URL landing page on your website. Now you're driving your listeners to your landing page on your website. Not a bad idea. And just in terms of call to action as a, as a, an outcome of them listening to your audiobook. So that's another way to do it. So there, you can either write around it or you can reference it online and, and hit, whether it's PDF downloadables or, you know, just simply a page where everything's presented. 
those are some ideas. The other question that was sort of inside of your other question was um, the word, um, you have to change the word when you read this. No, it's when you hear this. So yeah. a lot of that happens on the fly. And most experienced narrators that do audiobooks know to make those changes. So I would say that, uh, well, first of all, you're going to have a chance to approve the, the final product. And I want to say a little bit about hiring narrators. We always take the first 15 after you've awarded them the job. We work with you to help you do that. Now they're doing, the, they'll, they'll do the first, it's called the first 15 checkpoint. So they'll, they'll knock out 15 minutes and then send it to us so we can make sure they're on track. Is the pace right? Is the tone right? Um, are, are they mispronouncing proper nouns that they're just, or technical terms, if it's a medical book, for example. So, it's good to create a, by the way, it's, if it is a technical book, create a glossary. It can be an audio glossary. And this you can, as the author, create it with your uh, um, iPhone. Just record all the, the possible things that a narrator, not knowing what you're talking about, would trip over. Or a name that might be more obscure or just hard to pronounce. Just create a, an audio glossary and, and, and then we can send that to the narrator and they can reference it. It's harder to do it after the yeah. fact. It's easier if you're sort of prepared for whatever you might encounter as a result of misinterpreting something in the manuscript. So. Got it. Okay. So if I can uh, like sum up just a little bit. Some yeah. Of the, sorry. Like, there's so much there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, that's the reason for this conversation is like, <laughs> yeah, there, there are a lot of things that we should be thinking about if we're thinking about an audiobook. Yeah, yeah. So it would be good to have like a, I think you called it a, a recording. Manuscript. Yeah. A manuscript, a recording manuscript or a production manuscript. Mm-hmm let's call it a production manuscript. So you would actually, I guess, just like copy over your written manuscript and then you'd go back through it and just change, you know, how you want someone to actually say the word. So whether it's, you know, instead of read this, it would be hear this or listen to this. Yeah. Um, for graphics, you know, you could try it, you could put in a sentence or two to describe it, or you could just say to see the graphic go to this link. Um, and for any, um, words that you might have an audio glossary for me to like highlight them just so that they know oh yeah when I get to that part you know go to the audio glossary to yeah that's a great idea just do visual yeah. things to help make indications for them and then you'll have that first 15 to kind of do some corrections and then obviously at the end of the project when it's in, in delivered we'll pull all the audio send a link to you the author so that you can spot check or thoroughly check everything um most of the good experienced narrators uh, are doing their own editing and they're proofing things as they go, but they're human. Yeah. Um, so things can be changed if they need to be. They can be re-recorded and inserted. So we would ask the author to make a list of whatever the revisions are, reference the chapter um, and the page, uh, and go like that. I have heard some DIY audiobooks where it was clear that the person went back and inserted a word because it was like 2x speed or something, or like they just sounded really different. So you're like, yeah, it's like to patched in. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> what was well, there's an art, you know, again, well, it's the audio. They're, they're, you know, know how to do that professionally. Well, it's the audio editing part of this equation. Yeah. And you look, it's, it's on a different day in a different place with the microphone slightly further away than it was when they did the rest. I mean, there's all these little things we have to do environmentally in a recording environment or in a studio so that it matches. And so if there's noise in the background and suddenly the noise changed because it was a different day and they don't run noise reduction, you know, this stuff all, you can hear it and it sounds, uh, you know, sounds uh, amateurish. It does. Okay. So if you're working with talent, they should generally sort of edit, yeah. they should deliver files that are ready to be uploaded or they might even upload them for you. Um, that kind of thing. So yeah, they do upload do them to the, you know, they, they do, they know how to work with the ACX platform in that environment. And if you're going out to like, uh, if we're going to distribute from, from some of the others like Authors Republic or Find Away Voices, and we can talk more about distribution at a, under, you know, consultatively when I meet with an author, but there are a lot of other beyond the big three, but, but yeah. yeah, they all know how to do this stuff. And, and actually that's part of the services we provide is managing the files to get them up and generating the cover in the right spec that needs yeah. to go uh, along because it needs to be a square and a certain size specification and all that. So that's awesome. Okay, but that it's nice because if you, if as the author, if you do some of that upfront legwork, then it makes them easy, makes it easy for them to, yeah. for you guys to deliver. You know, the absolutely, absolutely, and, you know, and it, yeah, exactly. And we'll help lay the groundwork so they know what to do in advance. So, okay, so if we are thinking about doing it ourselves, because yeah. in other words, say, the I'm, author I'm, read. I'm, 
yeah. the author read, I'm the voice of the brand. I want to, I want to read it myself, but I know I'm not just going to pull out these headphones and like record my audiobook. I know I've got to do something else. Like what are, what are some things that we should be thinking about if we are going to record the, All right. as the, the author ourselves? Love this. So much of the work we do is working with authors to produce them in real time to get the best performance they're capable of in the moment that we're recording with them. So um, the way this works, I'll talk about it from the spectrum of, from the perspective rather of how we work. So yeah. I recommend, there are a couple different mics, but this is one of my favorites. It has a windscreen. It sounds spectacular on everybody. It's a USB, which means you can just plug it right into your computer. So as the author, we're gonna record you remotely. That's one of the features of the way we do this. We record with authors all over the world in the comfort of their own home or home office or office uh, like this. So one of the things you'll do is you'll buy a microphone, uh, it's equipment, not expensive, inside of $200 you'll spend total nice. for a headset and for the microphone. And by the way, as you promote the book and appear on podcasts, you're gonna need a high quality mic anyway. Some of the folks we work with already have a good mic. It might be a Yeti, it doesn't have to be this one, it just has to be a high quality podcasting mic will work. And one of the features about these microphones is that it's very important, and this is from years of, you know, I'm a music producer from the studio, right? So you wanna hear yourself on mic as a yeah. singer, as a musician, and as a voice actor. So we can plug either at earbuds or a headset, a closed cans as we call them in the studio biz. You've seen the bigger ones that kind of go across your head and are closed. Yeah. Those with a mini plug like this, it's a little uh, eighth inch mini plug, very common, like an iPhone's type of yeah. uh, configuration. Uh, you can hear yourself and then control how loud things are in your own set of, uh, it's called Q, Studio Q. So it's very important that you hear how you sound as you're being recorded so you can work the mic and work your voice and perform, you know, because that's what you're doing. So we coach you through all of this on the setup phase. You buy the mic, you do this. Um, I can't remember, am I answering your question? Some of the things we should yeah. be thinking about. Yeah, so, so what should we be thinking about? Yeah. So you should, get a, you should get a mic, you should get a windscreen, you should have earphones. Yeah. Um, and plug it into a it. USB yep. so that it can plug into your computer. Yep. But your computer, like you don't have to have one of those like audio recording devices because if we're working with you, then you're recording on your end. That is correct. We use a okay, system cool. called Squadcast, which does something called end-to-end -end recording. What that means is, is the recording is actually happening on the author's side, but we're recording it, uh, controlling it rather, and managing it from our side. So cool. it's kind of like a Zoom call like you and I are on right now. Morgan, we're, we show up on a, there's video. We don't record the video, but there's video there. And uh, you know the producer will say, okay, we're rolling on chapter one. The author starts and um, it's natural to have outtakes and retakes. That's just a part of the production process. Some authors can read for long periods of time before they stumble. When a stumble happens, either the producer or the author themselves will call it out. Say, okay, I'm going to pick that up. And you just roll back until the last good thing that happened. And then you continue. And so when oh, we wow. edit, we're stitching everything together to make a very fluid, seamless performance for the listener. But in process, it's messier than that. So, yeah. you know, and then you may stop or sometimes you find a typo. And so you have to make a note to your, you know, to, to whoever is working with you on the, on the manuscript to uh, email uh, publishing at paper, even books. Like, oh, yeah. It's like a, a, <laughs> yeah, it's a broadcast yeah, emergency. Right. So, uh, so that happens. Um, and that's, and typically we're scheduling in two hour chunks, 90 minutes to two hours is about as much as, as about as much as most authors can handle voice wise. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to have water nearby. You mentioned before we started recording this video about the environment. So we work very carefully. And this is something we talk about in the upfront. While we're talking about buying the microphone, you want to create an environment that's acoustically um, uh, appropriate for recording. Now I've built big expensive studios over the years being in the music business for this work. You're working the mic really close, close proximity. So it's not, necessary to be in, in a high fancy recording studio with all kinds of acoustic panels around you. That said, the best rooms to record in are those that have bookshelves behind you or around you. They have carpets on the floor. There's not a lot of tile and glass and sort of acoustically reflective surfaces. Sometimes I call this the bathroom effect. You don't want that showery bathroom reverb echo type of situation when you're recording. You want it to be what's called acoustically dry. So you want to suck all that echo out. The way you do it is having pillows and blankets around you. Uh, you know, you, you can do a makeshift and absorb most of this reflectivity out of almost any environment. The other thing about your environment to be sensitive to, I've had a few clients that were in, I'll call them commercial offices, 
that are not soundproof. And so you, you might have people walking down the hall. Oh, yeah. These are problematic. You may have a commercial grade HVAC or, you know, oh, HVAC yeah. system that's blowing air and then it turns off and then it turns on again. Oh. Those are hard things to filter out. We can do uh, a good degree of what we call noise reduction or gating to remove ambient sound on almost every author home office type of recording we're doing some amount of that to remember to pull it down to six minus 60 db noise floor so we have to do some of that but some of it's just not removable like uh, any kind of instantaneous noise if it's happening at the same time you're talking it can't be removed like a dog barking no, I can't had, get rid of that. Yeah, you can't get rid of it. So just to cut to the chase, uh, we'll talk to the author, make sure that there, there is an envi environment available to them that will be appropriate for recording. I might even listen to it uh, even on the phone to just get a sense of where they are. We'll I was going to say, could it. I just like pull you up on video and be like, okay, David, let me walk you around my house. Here's the yep. room with the couch. Here's my yep. closet. Here's my <laughs> Yeah, man, we could <laughs> FaceTime and do that. Absolutely. Kind of, like, figure it out. Yep. We just work through it. We know you're not going to build a recording studio, but some people, you know, you asked about what are some of the mistakes people make. I think you can get really caught up on equipment and, and making it perfect in terms of acoustics. And we've done hundreds of titles in what you might regard as kind of like second bedrooms or, or, or home offices or office environments. And they've come out just terrific because we know how to get it to a place where it's good enough that we can then do post-production and make it even better. So I'll leave it there for now. Okay. And you said that you do like 90 minutes, two hour sessions. And yeah. a lot of like our nonfiction books, you know, we're looking at like somewhere in the 30,000 to 80,000 word range. Yeah. So if we call it 50,000, I mean, what's that like? Yeah. Five so, hours, four, so five yeah. Hours? So the math is about 9,000 words is the average read rate per hour. So if you take 50,000 words and you divide it by 9,000, that's about a five and a half hour, just over five and a half hour final product at 9,000 read word, uh, uh, words per hour read rate. So say that fast three times. So um, that's, that's the word count for us drives everything. It drives uh, how long we'll need to record and it'll take that amount of time, the running time, probably plus another 30 percent of the running time to right. get it done. So in this case, we'd probably be talking about um, three, two hour sessions plus maybe a fourth. May Maybe a fourth hour. Once the, once we added all the, the entire audio book, we'll flag what I call a punch list. These are things that may have happened during the session. You bumped the table, it transferred up to the mic. You mispronounced something that neither you or the producer caught just because there was a flow going on, stumbled over something, and we're, we're just going to go, and it's just literally a punch list. We do a final session after the edit, and then we'll end up inserting those lines and replacing them to just clean things up. It's almost, very rarely do I not have a punch list. Sometimes we get through it without one, but, you know, there it is. Okay. So, so once we have our manuscript and we've gone through and we sort of made our own personal notes for ourselves as we're going to read, like, okay, say, listen, yeah. instead of read and, you know, use this yeah. line for the, so yeah. once we've done that, we're ready to record. We've got our stuff set up. It might be three or four weeks of kind of recording. And then you guys would spend a few weeks or yeah. five to eight weeks, something like that to clean. Yeah. Up and yeah. Ready. You use my number five to eight weeks is kind of the range when I'm talking to an author that I give, unless it's really short after we've recorded. Uh, it's the turnkey, I think. Oh, okay. if, if, if we condense the recording sessions pretty well, like the first two weeks are just recording and mm. we're doing three days a week or whatever it looks like, you know, every, there's, a, there's some elasticity when I say, f first of all, five to eight hours is, that's a, a range in and of itself. But um, that's the, the outside number, including the recording, because we can be editing while we're still recording it, th those processes can be concurrent. We don't have to record everything and then start editing. So I'll do a two hour session with an author. I'll upload it after we're done and my editor is already starting to work on it. So mm -hmm. if there's a simultaneousness to it and we can accelerate projects because of that. So. Got it. Okay. So if you're, you know, so for an author, we're working on, maybe we're planning to release a book or we're planning to re-release, you know, as an audiobook after our book is already launched, we should yeah. probably have in our minds five to eight weeks just to record, produce, have the audiobook ready to roll. Um, so, you know, for the purposes of launch, maybe give yourself like 12 weeks. To yeah, I think it's a smart idea. Plus there's a two week window for approval on ACX. Yeah. 
where they, they take 14 business days. I say two weeks. It's really a three week if you want to think in terms of leaving a little bit of uh, extra space in there. So um, we want to be starting this like three months before we want it. Yeah. Out. It's, yeah. it's not like, you know, recording a podcast, you pull up the anchor.fm app and you record 10 minutes and you release it. Like, <laughs> this is, no, it's not yeah. as, uh, no, it's, it, there's less toleration for the imperfections of audio and those sorts of things. So you need to, um, you need to leave the time to get it done right. And, uh, and the yeah. great thing is these are their books, they're assets, right? So this will continue to sell. I mean, I, I did not do my own audiobook. I want to, and David, I'm coming to you and I'm ready to re-record my own audio. Rock and roll. Yeah. Um, but so I had someone else do it. Um, but it still it sells better in 2019 than it did when I released it in 2015. So, so like it I is just blow that blows me away. It's great. That's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So you've really had a cool. firsthand experience of the market side of the equation, putting it out and Absolutely. really having people just soak it up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's not that many, I mean, in comparison to the number of books out there, there are not that many audiobooks, right? So if someone is on audible searching for a book in someone's genre, there's going to be like a tiny fraction of competitive books out there because there just aren't, there aren't nearly as many. Yeah, so, that's probably yeah. true. I haven't really thought about it in exactly those terms, but it's true. They're proportionately fewer audio. Uh, although I think that's changing as time goes on because authors are, really we're, we're starting uh, to get into yeah, that, it. yeah they, they need to co-release or, or simultaneous or nearly simultaneously release audio yeah, yeah. okay so we're, we've talked sort of like time and we've talked a few things about like budget for um like equipment and things like that yeah um, can we give like just some ballpark kind of numbers so let's say fifty thousand words I think you and I had earlier sort of said like maybe eight to 10 cents a word. Yeah. Kind of depending yeah. On that's the range. The project is. So yep. it might be for a 50,000 word book. We might be looking at like four or $5,000 something like that. Absolutely. Always good. I, whenever I like in my mind, um, create a budget for any of my projects, I always go just a little bit up yep. <laughs> just in case. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you do the math, yeah, you know, you can round it to 10 cents just for easy math and just know, uh, that um, that'll be the math. Just to use that 9,000 uh, word per uh, hour number and, uh, you know, to, to get the time piece and then just take your word count. Now, we do discount the word count a little bit. Uh, so there's some play in there. And when we work with the author, we'll figure out, are we going to, we're not going to do the table of contents. We're not going to do right. some of the, 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 the front or back matter. So, uh, you, you know, we tend to knock a few hundred words off the actual word count that you pull if you pull it up on a Word doc, you know, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, you know? that makes sense. Just yeah, but those are good numbers in terms of ballpark. General ballpark kind of thing. Yeah, and usually we're, we're taking some deposit before we record and then, and then the rest upon delivery. Got and it, there's some got flexibility it. in those things, as you know. So, you guys who are watching this has been a lot of information. So what David and I are going to do is we're going to create a, a page that has a lot of this sort of bullet pointed out, like how David and his team work with people and spoiler alert, David's working with paper, even books <laughs> and with me probably pretty soon. <laughs> so um, this, Very is, this is going to be something that we're starting to roll out to our author community is um, audiobooks. So we've been doing eBooks and paperbacks and hardbacks for years and it's time. It's time to start including audiobooks as part of the production process. And David, we're with you. So, <laughs> so we're good to be with you. To be bringing so, you on board to help with our community, help our community. I, this way. I'm honored and I love the work I'm doing. The fun part about our work is that we get to hang out with really smart people that write cool books and we learn. So it's good. So, okay. What if someone's like, super inspired, they're ready, they're going to the landing page, they're gonna find all the information we've got for them there, and they're like, I all need right. to talk to David, I need all details. Right. So we're gonna, put we, a, we're gonna put a link on that page, right, for scheduling, so there'll be a little link on the landing page, it, you'll, it'll hit, hit me in my calendar, you can search for a time, you, it's Calendly, a lot of folks are familiar. So you'll, you'll have options for when you can schedule, and then we'll do a 15, 20, 30 minute call, as long as it takes to kind of map out who's gonna do it, how long it'll take, what are the logistics, equipment, where, and all anything that. else? Get all your questions answered. Okay, guys, go to paperravenbooks.com slash audio. So we'll drop that in the uh, description as well, but paperravenbooks.com slash audio. And that'll get you all the details. It'll get you a way to talk with David personally about your book and your questions. If you want to talk with me, um, we'll also drop a link that um, you could talk with me or someone on my team 
Um, if you are already an author with Paper Raven Books, we'll absolutely get you the hookup. We can embed it in your timeline, in your publishing production timeline, so that we can line it up so that the audiobook's ready when your launch date, or we can do a yeah. second launch for your audiobook. We can absolutely plan all that in. So um, we'll have a way for you to reach out to me and the Paper Raven Books team as well with questions about your particular book timeline. Any other thoughts, ideas, suggestions for us, David? I am just excited to be a part of this party. And I think uh, in this exploding market that's going on for authors, it's very, I have witnessed a lot of authors read their own work. Some of them highly emotional. Some of them are like legacies for the family. Some of them are business books that they're just delivering their content. It's a powerful thing to, to, to have that experience of performing your own book. So I, I tend to really like that model, but either of these models are very powerful. If you just don't feel like you've got it in you to do, to do your own, we can uh, get you set up so that we find a powerful narrator to give your book that voice. Awesome. Yes. Thank and you. I mean, heck, you can hire someone else first and then do it yourself later if that's what I'm doing. <laughs> there it is. There's no wrong way to do it. Just get it done one way or another. Right on. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, guys. Paperravenbooks.com slash audio. We'll see you over there. Thank you, David. See you on the Thank other you. side. Thanks, Morgan. Bye-bye.